My name is Ned Gardner. I live in Asheville, North Carolina. I'm a contractor for NOAA's Climate Program Office. A lot of people who work in biodiversity conservation or climate change are confronted by massive realities that can be very depressing. For me, doing data visualization and helping other people see this information is really my way of coping with it. I want to give people access and let them see what the data say, because I think we all need to confront this reality together. I have always been interested in maps, and I've always been interested in how can we apply military technology for peaceful ends. So for me, one of the most interesting things is satellites that orbit Earth, and they give us a perspective about where we live. And I thought, well, this is a really great way to reach people who aren't scientists and help them understand what's happening. I really think that what we're seeing today is people responding to individual events. And collectively, we are starting to step back and see this is part of a pattern where people are in harm's way and the harm is getting more likely. Visualization of scientific information is one component of helping people see and experience for themselves what's happening so that they can make decisions that do matter 80 years from now, so that their children will inherit a world that they can continue to adapt to. This is a drought that you'd only expect to see every 100 years. This is a drought you'd expect every two to five years, this taupe. Mm -hmm. The breadbasket and the cattle producing areas of the country were in severe drought, so municipal water utilities use this to kind of justify the decisions they're making day to day, week to week. Well, Ned Gardner is uh, really unique in the sense that many scientists, they know the data, they know the science, but in terms of bringing that data to life and being able to visualize what's happening, because that's how people generally can learn the quickest. You know, your eyes are the biggest broadband system in your, in, in your, in your body, so if you can visualize something that's happening, you can understand it very quickly. People get very captivated by space travel and thinking about astronomy and cosmology and the origin of the universe. It's awesome. So we start from that big perspective, all of our shows, and teach people what's the origin of water? Why is there life on this planet and not on other planets? What is special about Earth? That big picture perspective then sets up a better appreciation of what we do have here. So as we zoom in, we can show people the, how thin the atmosphere is that separates this living environment we're in right now from the cold, dark vastness of outer space. And having done that, you've established why it's important. We're on a rock hurtling through space at hundreds of thousands of miles an hour, incredibly improbable, incredibly beautiful to think about, and we share this. This is our shared experience, and we need to do what we can to live within the limits, but also the incredible abundance it provides us. I think the biggest challenge for all of us on climate is that we have to do more than just what we do as individuals. We have to tap into something deeper, which is our social our capacity as social organisms to interact and learn from one another and come up with new ways of designing the future.